why we need the good news. This is why Jesus came. Because we are surrounded by people and media and things that drill into us the bad news. But I want you to focus on one thing today. The good news. What is the good news? Luke 4 verse 18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recover his sight for the blind to release the oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Boom. Done. It. That's your goal. That's what Jesus came for. That's what we're called to. That's what life should be about. Let's preach free. Uh, let's preach good news to the poor. And you might think, well, what good news could the poor have tons? <laughs> let's preach freedom to the prisoners. And you know, we're all prisoners to what? Their sinful nature. Yeah. Right? So we offer freedom. We offer good news. And we offer recovery of sight because sometimes we just get stuck in blind and dumb. You know what's interesting is there's an epidemic around the world right now. It's an epidemic that it doesn't matter if you're in the Baltic Nordic countries or if you're in North America or if you're in Africa, South America. It doesn't matter. This epidemic is all over the place and it's more prevalent actually in the first world countries. Because sometimes in the rich countries, the first world countries, we think, oh, we don't need that. We're rich. We've got everything. And it's kind of true. But we've got something else as well that a lot of other countries don't have in the same magnitude. you know what that is? It's kind of like ungratefulness. It's loneliness. Loneliness is a worldwide epidemic, especially in first world countries, especially in cities. They say, and studies have proven, that loneliness is the equivalent to smoking 15 cigarettes a day. It affects your health. It affects your outlook. It affects the way you approach your life. And it affects your longevity. And there are lonely people all over the place. There's organizations in different countries that are specifically focused on this now. It's ironic because the biggest problem, like I said, is in the cities. You think surrounded by people that you wouldn't be lonely, but in fact you're more lonely. The speed of the cities. Most of the condos and the townhouses are, are, are bachelor suites or one bedrooms. People living three, four hundred in a building and they're super duper lonely. That's why Jesus came. See, that's the good news. And so when we're rich and famous and have all of these beautiful things, remember, you cannot escape that. We cannot escape loneliness. Why? Because we're horrible at something. What are we horrible at? Relationship. We're horrible at it. You know it, and I know, oh, at first it's always super exciting, right? Talk to any newlywed. Oh, they're so cute. They love each other. Give them a month. Give them a year. Give them two. You know, and so when we start to irritate each other because we're sinners and we make mistakes and we make messes, then what happens? We don't like each other. We move on and move on. And then you man, I'm so glad I'm alone. And then before you know it, I'm lonely. See, that's the incredible thing about God is He wanted one and one thing only and He specializes really in one thing only and that's relationships. A relationship with Him and our relationships with one another. That's the Bible you've just read. It's over and over and over again. You need, desperately need a relationship with Him. His grace, His mercy, His forgiveness, His reconciliation. Why? Because it's awesome. And then we can turn around and actually grant that and give that to each other and have the fulfilling, meaningful relationships that we all want. Ask anybody in the world, I don't care what they have or don't have. Ask them what they really want and really need in their lives. And they will say relationship. Over and over again, they will say family. And that's what God provides. That's what He brought for us. That's the good news. That's the cross of Christ. Is that we do not have to be lonely. In Acts 14, verse 15, it says, Men, why are you doing this? We too are only men, human like you. We are bringing you good news, telling you to turn from these worthless things to the living God, who made heaven and earth and sea and everything in them. So what's the 
worthless things. But what is Paul direct, or what is Luke in his writing here directing us to do? Turn from the worthless things. What's the worthless things? All the materialism, right? All, all the things that we think bring us happiness. And you know what? This is our problem. They do bring us happiness. For a moment. And that's our society. That's who we are. We want the moment. I want to be happy now. I want to be happy in this moment. I want to be happy now. So you know what? I'm getting that iPhone XRZ2. Because it's new. And it's going to bring me that happiness until the new one comes out. Right. I'm going to get that new car. I'm going to get that new job. I'm going to get that money. Oh, no, I know where I'm going to get it. That trip. And you know what? That trip always makes me happy. Until I come home. <laughs> Or a week back at my job. Right. See, it's fleeting and it's worthless. Travel, go ahead, do those things, but don't ever fool yourself thinking that that is what will bring the contentment, the peace, the, the inner need that we all have. There's only one thing. It's God. It's our relationship with Him. When we truly can graft onto that, then and only then will our needs truly be met. That's what he brings. That's the good news, guys. We can't remind ourselves enough. Because each and every day, you're tricked. You're fooled. You're sucked in to the worthless things. You know, I think a graduation time is a great time, isn't it? But you know what happens after graduation for many families? Divorce. It's the highest divorce rate in the country right now. Empty nesters. Why? Because they poured everything in their children, thinking that their children were the be all end all, thinking that their children were going to make them everlasting peace. And anybody who has teenagers knows that's not true. <laughs> but they, they poured everything and they forgot their marriage. And often they forget that marriage to God. And then they wake up, you know, their kids are off at college or gone on to careers or whatever, and, and they look at each other and go, Who are you? He gave us children to see Him, to see His love, right? To bring them to Him, not to be selfish with it, not to be self-absorbed with it. And so we chase these worthless things instead of putting it in the right order. And the good news is Jesus, the good news is God and our relationship with Him. You have to ask yourself, anytime that you think, yeah, this is it, I'm so excited, this is what I need, ask yourself this question. Will you think the same in 10 years? How about 20? 50? How about 100 years? Will you think the same in 100 years? How about an eternity? See, because God doesn't think short term. He's not short sighted. He thinks in eternity. And He wants us for eternity. He wants this relationship forever. He wants us to live a fulfilled and content life and then with Him for the rest of existence, forever and ever. We are lonely. We were built for relationship. We need the good news. The good news that God wants a relationship with us, and through Him we can have relationships with one another. This is a, this is a tremendous song. Psalm 68, verse 5 says, A father to the fatherless. That's God. A defender of widows. What a mighty God is God in His holy dwelling. God sets the lowly in families. He leads forth the prisoners with singing, but the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. See, when we're living wanting and empty and always desiring things, we're missing the point. Because the point is, He's a father to the fatherless, defender of widows, and He puts the lonely in families. I can relate to that. I was fatherless. And lonely. And He gave me you. And that's good. Yeah. It's awesome. We're not perfect. We, 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 we make mistakes. We hurt each other. I get that. But we got God that orchestrates that. We got God that manages that. And it's incredible to have a family because of Him. He sets the lonely in families, cures the loneliness. That's the mission. Here and everywhere around the world. God is great. And the news is great. You don't believe me? Well, I want to tell you a story. It's a short story. It's about a person here named Cure Pools. Yeah. yeah. Cure's getting baptized. This is a cool story. And some of you know it, but I'm going to tell it anyway. 
Pierre Poles was an orphan in China. Everybody know where China is? It's a long ways away from Alaska. So she's an orphan in China, and there's this, this single woman who wanted a family. Her name, Pam Poles. And Pam decided that she was going to adopt, and she adopted Kira and then later Katie. And so she brought them into her family. Pam has raised Kira and Katie, loved them, poured out for them, shown them what it's like to have a family, brought them to our family and integrated them, and they've become certainly in our part of our family here. From an orphanage in China to a family in Alaska. And today, Kira gets adopted again. Here it goes from orphanage in China to the kingdom of God. That's incredible. Like that's so inspiring that God put all of those pieces in place so that Kira could have a relationship with him forever. That's good news. That is great news. Because I asked Kira, I had a talk with her, and I said, so I want you to picture this. Where would you be if Pam had come? Where would you be if your mom hadn't adopted you? And I want you to think of the same question. Where would you be if Jesus had not adopted you? Where would you be if he didn't save you? Where would you be without your relationship with him? That's the good news. I don't even want to think of where I would be or what I would be or how I would be because it would be a real mess. I know I'm a mess, but that would be a real mess then. And it's important for us to realize that, to think about that. Where would I be without the grace of God, without God and His love and what He has done for me? The mission that God gives us is so incredible. To bring good news. In a world that fixates, like I said, on bad news. Romans 10, 15 says, And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. You guys have beautiful feet. <laughs> really beautiful feet. It, it, yeah. These new shoes on. <laughs> but you think about that. We have. Sometimes we get bogged down. We call it words like evangelism. And, and we think, ugh, i got to talk to people. And everybody's happy to be anywhere. You know, we get all negative again. And we forget the good news. We forget that God has given us the good news. And we got beautiful feet. We <laughs> talk to people about it. Realize that they're probably lonely. They may have that, you know, jaguar. But they're probably lonely. Right? Because the stuff doesn't cover the heart. And what we really need on the inside. So we've been giving this mission here in Alaska to go make disciples. Go bring people some good news. Go serve. Go be kind. You know, go spend some time with someone and listen to them. Take the energy and show them what this good news looks like. Because then I tell you what, they might, just might want to open up the Bible with you. Because people want to know the good you do more than they want to know the words you say. Amen. You know, in a minute we're going to take communion. And communion is all about the greatest news ever. Greatest news ever. It's about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. But Jesus took our place. That because of his sacrifice, we can be free. We've got good news. We live in good news and can live for eternity with him. There's going to be a little piece of bread and a little cup of juice passed around which represent the body and the blood of Jesus. As we take it today, I want you to reflect. I want you to think about one thing. Good news. Good news. Bury your brain. Bury your heart. In all the good news, as it says in Ephesians 1, verse 3, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For He chose in Him, before the creation of the world, to be holy and blameless in His sight. In love, He predestined us to be adopted 
as his sons through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. Let's give thanks for the body of love. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much. I can't thank you enough for sending Jesus, for letting him take our place, for letting him face the consequences of our sin, of my sin. I thank you, God, that through his death, burial, and resurrection, that I can be free, that my life and my direction is full of good news. Father, that I have good and great news to share with others. That because of this great news, because of this sacrifice, because of your agape, your unconditional love for me and for everyone, God, that we can have true relationships. We can have a relationship with you. We can be reconciled to you. Thank you, God. And we can have true, meaningful relationships with one another. Unhindered, God, because of you, because of your mercy, forgiveness, and reconciliation. Father, as we take this communion today, I pray that each and every one of us will be reminded of your good news, of the incredible blessings, spiritual blessings that you pour out on us each and every day. Help us give us strength to push off the negativity, to push off the bad news, to know and believe that through your Son, that has no power in our lives. Father, we love you. We thank you for this celebration of the resurrection of Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen.
then that concludes the communion portion you know, of our service. And of course, we were talking about good news. We were talking about the gospel. We talked about mission. And the beautiful thing about that is it's universal. It's all over the world. And as Mark 15, or Mark 16, verse 15 said, it said to them, go into all the world, preach the good news to all creation. And so we have our little corner of the world, but we've got, you know, the whole big world. And we're so excited today to be able to have Hans and Tina here from, from Estonia to share with us about the good news over there. So I'm going to invite them up. Come on up, Hans and Tina. They're going to tell us about the Russia, they opened it recently. Ah, I have 
I had no idea about ICOC or, or this movement. Or he told me just next morning, just go to this uh, Christian bookstore and, and buy this Bible and start to read. So I did this, and two weeks after this, I was like baptized. <laughs> so I, I, I didn't have faith. I, I just. You know, God took me and gave me faith, gave me hope, gave me promises, gave me, like, everything what I need. But uh, God had even bigger plan for me than I can, could imagine. So, uh, it, it's about a year after I was converted, that they, they had, like, plans to plant the church in, in Tali. This Tallinn was the first planting in, in the Baltics. And uh, in Scandinavia, there was already churches in Helsinki, Finland, Stockholm, Sweden, also Norway. Yeah, and of course, Copenhagen was planted in 1990. Um, and uh, I, I lived, while I was a disciple, I lived my comfort life in, in Sweden. So I. I thought I I feel good here, and I don't I don't I don't know uh, I don't want to go back to Estonia. So, <laughs> but um, God took me a kind of retreat we had with the, with the brothers and sisters in Stockholm, and that was um, uh, teaching uh, about Ezekiel, and I just want to read this. This passage, what touched my heart, and this is Ezekiel 33. <clears throat> the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, speak to your people and say to them, When I bring the sword against the land and the people of the land, choose one of the men and make him their rich man. And he sees the sword coming against the land and blows the trumpet to warn the people and so on. And uh, this, this uh, passage touched my heart so much, I repented in five seconds. <laughs> so I went to the brothers, I told them, I want to go. And uh, yeah, we, we had like a team with two, 12 people, 12 disciples, and Flemings were with us. And uh, that was amazing. It will be like, this, this summer it will be 25 years ago. And the, the church in Tallinn is about the same size you have. We have 100 kids to take care, to teach them. So, yeah. I, I remember this is all about God, not about me. God took me out of my dark place without hope, without... I probably I would be dead if God not took me this time. I really I'm really appreciating his grace and his mercy. Of course, sin is universal everywhere. Yeah. We are sinners, you are sinners. We we have to keep the fight against sin. So thank you guys for inviting us here. It's a great pleasure to just to meet you, and I really hope, you know, we, as we see you, I, I hope really our kids can come over and see you and, and get the encouragement from you. We love you so much, thank you for inviting us. Great uh, hanging out with them. You do need to understand that Hans and Tina, they're not in the full time ministry. You know, they have regular jobs, you know, like everybody here, and they took two weeks out of their lives away from their children, their family, to come here. Uh, you know, and that's what this special missions is all about. It's a way for us to give. You know, the Baltic Nordic, both, you know, both areas are extremely atheistic. You know, it, it, people just don't think of God, they don't know God. You know, and, and that's really, when you think about it, that's what missions is. Missions is about giving people the opportunity, right, to see Jesus and experience Jesus and experience His Word. So we've had a, a great time. God has been working. They prayed for three things.
fins while they were here. They prayed they'd see whales. Uh, they prayed they'd see a, a grizzly bear. And they prayed that there would be an earthquake. We uh, <laughs> thank them for that afterwards. <laughs> so we went out to, uh, up to the Alaska Conservation Area yesterday. And as we were driving out, guess what was swimming up the turning rock? The belugas! So we pulled over. You know, we're seeing these belugas. And then somebody pulls in right behind us. Yeah, Chris and Katie. Right and so they, they saw the whales, we went out to the conservation area, they saw the grizzly, then we came back, and I guess at 4.30 there was an earthquake. Yeah. So, <laughs> I answered their prayers. So we're going to take up our special missions contribution now. Uh, each of you have an envelope. If you don't have an envelope that was on your chair and you'd like one, you can raise your hand and the ushers will get you one. Basically, you put your name on the top, you can just put one check or cash or whatever it is on the inside. And on the outside, you mark what you want to give for regular, your regular contribution, and then what is for your special contribution, and then your total, and then just seal that up, and, you know, we'll see what God can do. We're looking forward to a long relationship, you know, with the Baltic work. I know that we're planning to go over and visit, you know, we want more <coughs> folks from there to come over and visit us, so let's create family around the world through this opportunity. So let's pray for the special missions contribution and have some announcements. Heavenly Father, thank you. It's so cool and it's so inspiring to be able to, you know, meet a Hans and Tina and to know your family. Yeah. Family on other, you know, other continents, other parts of the world. And, you know, and that we have the same passion, the same dreams, the same mission. You know, to get people to see you, to get people to receive and to share the good news that you brought. Yeah. Father, we thank you for that. Father, we pray that we will look at our hearts and, and know that this is a way that we can make disciples yeah. in the North and Baltic countries. Father, help us to, uh, to give from our heart, knowing that you will use it in very powerful ways. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give. We pray you bless it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The ushers are going to hand out the uh, baskets with some announcements as they do that. Midweek, 7 p.m., uh, all together at the